honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on thesportstuff.com and also brought to you by the Oddman Media Network. Here are your hosts, Paladino Joey and Marcus the Forecaster. <laughs> Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on the sportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show. Timberwolves Explosion is also brought to you by the Oddman Media Network. That is www.theoddman.com. A U D M A N.com. And don't forget the the at the beginning. and There were times I'd been forgetting it, and I do apologize because that would have been the incorrect address. So, it's been an extremely positive week for the Minnesota Timberwolves. They played four games, and they won three of them. Holy crap, Batman! You heard that. You heard that right. They uh, won three out of four. A uh, winning record for the Wolves. Well, I'll be doggone. eh? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Yeah, they won three out of four games. So... As per usual, three-segment show, review, preview, fan interaction. Let's get to it. <laughs> Let's get to it. Reviews. Well, their only loss was to the Dallas Mavericks. Ricky Rubio made a comeback Monday, February the 2nd. Monday, February the 2nd, Ricky Rubio. Back and alive again. Can you believe it? And he looked pretty damn good. Uh, yeah, he looked really damn good. Been working with his shooting coach, and uh, he looks like a different guy. Remember how Ricky Rubio scoring 10 points looked like he was struggling to get it? It's about the most effortless 10 points he ever scored, <laughs> to be quite honest. He actually started in this game as well. 21 minutes, about 22, yeah, about 21-22, so to speak. So about 21 and a half minutes in the game. Uh, yeah, about the easiest 10 points he's ever scored. He looked, uh, he looked like a different guy out there. I'm really looking forward to the future with Mr. Ricky Rubio. Nikola Pekovic, overall a strong week. I'm going to probably cheat ahead. At some point during uh, when I get to the lone wolf part to uh, comment that Tanae Brown made tonight, I I, I got to do it because it's in regards to the lone wolf and all that good stuff. So, But uh, yeah, Pekovic is definitely going to be a candidate. Very strong week this week overall. Gorgie's Jang is probably even a candidate in, in a way. Um, strong performance by both of these guys. We, it's a good problem to have when you have big men playing well. Two two centers that are playing well. Gorgie's Jang in only 21 minutes had 9 points and 9 rebounds. Strong game in general. Andrew Wiggins, pretty quiet. 4 of 14. 14 points, so still kept his uh, double-digit streak going. Unfortunately, this would be number 22. And, uh, well, yeah, we'll get back to that in a little bit. <laughs> we'll get back to that in a little bit, where uh, where it ends, unfortunately. Thaddeus Young, even he was good. I mean, even Thaddeus Young was good in this game. Um, it's too bad the Wolves lost, ultimately. It's just their defense wasn't good enough. The final score, again, 100-94. to So Dallas did make the triple digits. The Wolves did not. Not quite as high scoring as I expected, but that's partially because the Wolves shot fairly poorly. Only 3 of 13 from the floor. Kevin Martin, 8 of 17. Not bad. I mean, this is basically what I'd call a typical Kevin Martin game, as I'd been ranting about his uh, field goal attempts and everything. This is about what I. This is about a Kevin Martin game. 19 points, 8 of 17. That sounds like Kevin Martin, doesn't it? And he's back to shooting guard, which is a good thing. I think Wiggins is more of a small forward than a shooting guard. I like the fact that Andrew Wiggins is more had a more multifaceted type of game. In fact, he got five rebounds, and all of them are offensive rebounds, but just struggling getting the ball in the in the basket at times. Blocked three times along the way. Uh, did get three, did get two steals, and get a block of his own. Three assists as well. Like in the chemistry that's starting that he's starting to form with another young guy. We'll get back to that. In fact, two different guys. Anthony Bennett and uh, Zach Levine. He's been uh, feeding both of them for dunks over the course of this week. Pretty cool. Thaddeus Young was fairly strong in the game. He even got nine rebounds. That was impressive. <laughs> Thaddeus Young, second on the team in rebounds, tied with uh, Gorgie behind Pekovic's ten rebounds. I mean, it was a good game, but the Wolves did not shoot particularly well, and the defense wasn't wasn't very good. And J.J. Barea, of course, Hitting shots late in the game ended up beating us. That was really annoying, actually. 
yeah, making plays late in the game and and one. Very, very frustrating. Monta Ellis shooting way too much. Kind of like a, it's kind of like another Westbrook slash Kevin Martin. He's basically the Kevin Martin of the Dallas Mavericks. (laughs) He basically is. 7 of 21 from the floor. Still managed to get 23 points because he got to the line, but only made 6 of 11. That was kind of lame. And Dirk Nowitzki's kind of playing that Tim Duncan role now. Uh, Down to only 10 field goal attempts, but made 7 of them. See, it's like his field goal attempts are down, but his efficiency is up, and he still managed to get 16 points. It's just a well-oiled machine, and yeah, Rondo didn't even play in this game due to injury. So there it is, and uh, Ricky Ledoux, Mr. Forecaster's favorite uh, sleeper player, not getting on the court. I'm sure he's not too happy about that, as he might be watching from afar. It's a This is a very deep, very deep team. They didn't play that well, but they played well enough. Guys like Chandler Parsons and Dirk Nowitzki shooting the lights out, ultimately, even though limited attempts. Chandler Carson is just a perfect fit for this franchise. Just perfect. 8 of 12 from the floor. 18 points, 6 rebounds. Just made the shots he needed to. Made a couple threes. Dirk Nowitzki made a couple threes. They're just a really, really good basketball team. And again, I'm going to continue to say they are a legitimate threat to win the Western Conference, despite the fact they won't have home court advantage in the first round or probably anywhere after that, unless there's another sleeper like the Warriors, or excuse me, the Warriors, the uh, uh, Thunder somehow go all the way to the West Finals to play the Mavericks, then Dallas would have home court advantage in that series, but otherwise Dallas looks like they're kind of stuck in that 5-6 to six range. We'll see though, I mean, who knows? <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? Maybe the Clippers will fall off. Um, I have a, I, I was thinking of a, yeah, I mean, I have a statement to make about the whole situation with Chandler Parsons, because remember, he could have been a Timberwolf in the past, um, during that whole Buttinger draft, and remember how it's like, who would you rather have, or not Buttinger draft, when we traded for Buttinger, and ultimately they, uh, the Houston Rockets ultimately picked Chandler Parsons over Buttinger, and it, we wound up with, with Buttinger, you know, and we could have had Chandler Parsons anyway, and ultimately, Parsons is the better player. But at the end of the day, you know what? <laughs> it all worked out anyway, because guess what? We're, 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 we're set at small forward. Because you have Andrew Wiggins, and you also have Shabazz Muhammad. So maybe Kevin Martin eventually gets traded away, or his contract runs out, whatever, whichever comes first. He's on the second year of a four-year ditty. So he's still got a little time left here in Minnesota, barring some type of trade. Somebody's going to have to be willing to take on uh, two more years of 14-plus to go on those, so the total, total, so it's like seven plus in the next two years, in each of the next two years for Kevin Martin, maybe a Dallas type of team, but eh, I don't know, I guess they're satisfied with Monta Ellis, but we'll see where things go, maybe even the Rockets could take him back, <laughs> maybe, um, but no, we're set at small forward, you got Wiggins and Shabazz Muhammad, and then of course one of them, probably Wiggins, would move to shooting guard when Kevin Martin is gone, so that way Shabazz Muhammad can start, and you'll be hearing from Brett Walters, who talks about that in the fan interaction, it's going to be a dynamite fan interaction segment, so do stick around for that, Um, the Wolves ultimately in this game, not clutch, not clutch, but the good news is, they get more clutch later on as the week progresses, so let's quickly move on, because the fact we have four games to review, the preview segment is probably going to be pretty short, because the All-Star break is coming up well, I did pick the Wolves to lose to Dallas, and I picked the Wolves to win against Miami. So I'm going to be 1-3 and three this week. I did pick the Wolves to, or no, 2-2 two and two this week, pardon me. I did, so I was correct about Dallas and then Miami. So the 2006 and 2011 finalists <laughs> in both cases uh, coming to, well, to play against the Timberwolves. In this case, the Wolves host the Miami Heat. They went to Dallas on Monday, February the 2nd, but now Wednesday, February the 4th, I did pick the Wolves to be the Miami team, because I figured, you know, Rubio's going to have the offense playing better, and he absolutely did against the Dallas Mavericks, was fantastic in that game, just just fantastic in that game, despite the fact that he's going to get limited playing time, because he's just coming back from a pretty nasty injury with his ankle, well, he did, he, I mean, his offense wasn't quite as uh, interesting necessarily, but he got to the line, 6 of 8, Managed to get eight points. He made only one free uh, field goal, but the point guard play was fantastic in this game throughout the well, throughout the entire night. Nine assists for Rubio, ten assists for Mo Williams. Both of them splitting time. Mo Williams won up with about a minute more. In fact, exactly a minute more than Mr. Rubio. The Wolves, for the longest time, they were ahead for a little bit. Next thing you know, they're down by ten, but then they just kind of hung on. 
The Heat started missing shots, and the Wolves started making shots, to be quite frank. And Kevin Martin got hot, ultimately, in this game. He was shooting well. And in this game, I was satisfied with Kevin Martin taking 23 shots, which, again, you'd, you're probably surprised to hear me say that. <laughs> because he made 11 of 23, so he was shooting about 50%. And the Wolves shot 51% from the floor and 54 and a half, so basically 55% from three-point range. Okay, you know, whatever, it's like a, it's a half, yeah, that's kind of goofy. So basically 55% or 6 of 11 from the floor, and Kevin Martin made half of his threes, and basically basically half of his shots from the floor in general. 30-point game for Kevin Martin. I mean, if he's hot and he's playing and he's stroking the ball well, okay, let him let him keep it up. Just let him go, and it helped the Wolves win this game. Ricky Rubio... Pardon me, Kevin Martin was clutch in this game, making free throws late, and of course, again, hitting threes late in the game, and and, uh, forcing some stupid shots, but at the same time making some good ones that helped the Wolves come back and ultimately win this one. And in a game when Hassan, (laughs) Hassan Whiteside was destroying the Timberwolves the entire night. I mean, he's a 2020 machine. 2020 machine. Who'd have thunk it? Hassan Whiteside, a guy who could barely make a summer league roster at one point? A guy who could, well, he'd sneak into your training camp roster. Well, not sneak into it. He'd get on your training camp roster, and he just, you know, for some reason, he just wouldn't make your team, whatever the reasoning is. 24-20 and 20 from the floor. Outstanding. Luol Deng was really good. He's back playing again. I, I thought he was going to be out, but he was playing. Chris Bosh, nothing special whatsoever. But, of course, hit, some, hit a fairly clutch shot pretty late in the game, and it was kind of annoying. Norris Cole, though, pulled a Russell Wilson. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> the Wolves leading by one very late in the game with like five seconds left or so. <laughs> uh, Norris Cole didn't like the inbound from Hassan Whiteside. Points at Hassan, so I'll go back, out, go back out of bounds. Here's the ball back so you can inbound it to me again. Oh, wait, the ball was already in and the clock was running and it was a live ball and it was out of bounds. So there's Russell Wilson and... Uh, <laughs> Russell Wilson got, uh, strikes again. So, sorry for all you Seahawks fans out there, but you can stuff it because I like the Patriots and I ch- highly cheer for them. Sorry, Vince. I, I know you were cheering for the Seahawks too. And I think a lot of the Aussies were because a lot of, just the whole planet was cheering for the Seahawks and like 5% of us are cheering for the Patriots. I still to this day don't know why. I really don't. Especially if you're a Laker fan. How can you not like the Patriots if you're a Laker fan? Come on now. Come on now. What's What's wrong with you? If you like Kobe Bryant and you don't like Tom Brady, what's wrong with you? Bloody hell. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Wankas. No, okay, I'm just <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm killing myself now. I'm going to I'm going to be kicked off the air here. You're all going to hate me and say screw this guy, but no, this was a a satisfying game for us in a big way. Uh, Thaddeus Young again, efficient. Didn't rebound, but he got some assists. Five steals in the game. Really big. Those steals were really big. Some of them late in the game. Changed the pace of everything. Kept the Wolves in it. Stuffed out Miami. Got the possession back. I mean, it was really nice. Thaddeus Young was very solid in the game, but Kevin Martin, the overall player of the game. Gordy Zhang, another near double-double with 13 points and nine rebounds. Again, just really solid. The guy has just been playing wonderful basketball. Um... Pekovic started out pretty good, and I was getting, like, get, get Gorgie in there. I was hoping we would get Gorgie in there, and once he did go in, it seems like the Wolves play better when Gorgie's in there. Unless Pekovic is just absolutely tearing it up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Uh, he played well against Miami, don't get me wrong. He did, but Gorgie played better. So let's put credit where it's due. Ultimately, both of them had a strong game. Final statistic of this particular night, though, is a sad one. It's sad. Uh, Andrew Wiggins played about 37 minutes, only 2 of 8 from the floor. Did manage to get 5 rebounds and a block, but only 6 points. Yeah, so unfortunately, that spells the end of the double-digit streak, so he will not pass Kevin Garnett for the uh, rookie record for consecutive uh, double-digit points as a rookie. Double digit, you know, double digit games, you know, ten or more points in a in a game as a rookie. Interesting statistic. I'm still blown away by that. Kevin Garnett, who I mean, in, in his first season in the NBA, only averaged ten point four points a game, and yeah, I know it by heart because I'm 
that big of a Timberwolves fan. Not not that big of a Garnett fan as I am a Timberwolves fan. Timberwolves fan first, Garnett fan, eh. Well, I was a Garnett fan second, Timberwolves fan first. Now it's like, eh. Well, I mean, I'm just not a big fan of Kevin Garnett anymore. Sorry. But it's just to think that he had 33 straight double-digit games in his rookie season. It's just, that just blows my mind. It, it really does. He only averaged 10.4 points a game. But also it tells you how, well, his, <laughs> his first half of that season he only averaged about three points a game, and then he just really came on and played much better. It, it's an amazing statistic, and unfortunately Andrew Wiggins is not going to pass it. So we'll end on that note. It's not a negative note. Ultimately a wonderful, satisfying win for the Wolves, and there it is. It started what would be a uh, three-game winning streak. Miami Heat continuing to stink, <laughs> so unfortunately for them, Friday, February the 6th, probably the best game of the season for the Timberwolves, and it didn't look like it was going to be. It really didn't, Because, uh, but then again, the Wolves hung on the entire way. That's what gave us hope. That's what gave us hope, but once it got to that third quarter, and the Grizzlies started pick, picking up like eight-point leads, five-point leads, and then it started to grow to eight, and even ten at one point, it's like, yeah, it's eventually going to turn into a uh, it's going to be what I expected. Memphis is going to win by like 10, 15 points against the Wolves because they, they match up so poorly for us. I mean, we always give up turnovers against this team. And the Wolves did have their share, 16 in this game. So that was not surprising. Overall, the Wolves, again, the passing lane, it struggled in this game. And what a surprise. I mean, of course it did. Even though Rubio had five assists in the first quarter, in fact, the first like eight minutes of the game, Rubio had five assists, and that's what he'd finished with. But we'll get back to Ricky Rubio in a little bit here, won't we? Gorgi Zheng and Nikola Pekovic, the big man duo. They're kind of in, in and out, the big man tag team, I suppose, since they won't play them together, which, again, still miffs me to this moment. Nothing uh, nothing major out of any out of either one of them. Pekovic won up with 13 points, but he took 13 shots. So he kind of struggled. And, again, that did not surprise me because Marcus Sol has dominated Nikola Pekovic in the past. He only attempted nine shots in the game. Not sure what Memphis is thinking there. <laughs> because Chekovic doesn't play well against... He doesn't he doesn't stop Marcus Gasol. And Marcus Gasol does tend to frustrate and block Pekovic. So again, not sure what's going on with that one. That's probably a big reason why Memphis lost the game. Mike Conley wound up with seven assists. He was good, but again, nothing spectacular. Nothing spectacular, and Zach Randolph, this is probably one of the more stunning statistics for me, only six points in the game. He always kills the Timberwolves. Makes Thaddeus Thaddeus Young look awfully good, but even he didn't play that well in this game. His defense was solid, but his offense not so good. Uh, This was a definitely lower shooting percentage type of game, only 43% from the floor. To Memphis is 52%. 52%. But they kept missing their threes, only 2 of 12 from the floor. Didn't help their cause in any way, shape, or form. The Wolves just managed to hang on, just barely. Despite the fact that... just uh, They just managed to hang on, despite the fact that uh, the Timberwolves were not shooting well, in in general. And Kufos ran into Rubio going to the basket, or actually it was at Wiggins, and then ultimately Rubio hurt his ankle a bit in this one. This was actually Kufos, kind of was uh, following Rubio going to the basket. Yeah, it was Kufos, or Rubio. And it looked like Rubio hurt his ankle again. Limping around, going to the locker room, and it's like, oh no, now what? <laughs> Great, we're screwed. And then Rubio comes back in. And the next thing you know, the guy wins the game by himself. The Wolves trailing, <laughs> the Wolves manage to hang on. It's like, huh, we're within three points. It's like, I was kind of in a daze figuring we're going to lose the game. I mean, Memphis is going to pull away. They're going to win by like ten points or something. But then it's a three-point game. It's a three-point game. They're just The Wolves are just hanging in there. And then Rubio hits a three-pointer. It's a tie game. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. And then next thing you know... <laughs> There's an inbound play. (laughs) And Rubio (laughs) gets fouled. (laughs) Gets fouled. And makes both of his free throws. He gets the steal and makes both of his free throws. Rubio steals the ball, makes both of them. Now he's got 17 points. And then one more inbound play. They can't handle it. 
Wiggins steals the ball, chucks it down to Rubio, and it's game over. They just run the clock out. Unbelievable. The Wolves defeat the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, my. Uh, by one point. Unbelievable. 90-89, to 89, Minnesota defeats the Memphis Grizzlies for their second win in a row. And what I would say is the most impressive win of the season. Just an outstanding finish by the Wolves. Pekovic in the game, 13 points, as I already mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why I'm even bringing that up. Wiggins managed to get 18 points, much more efficient than he had been. And what I like is his rebounding numbers have been going up. He got six rebounds in the game, but overall, Rubio. (laughs) Rubio just changed the game here. I mean, just his passion, his exuberance, and anyone that would dare question Ricky Rubio's... Ricky Rubio's want to come back from that ankle injury... I mean, I I think that would quiet them up for good now. I mean, anybody that would question that, they're crazy. And again, like I mentioned many times, I never once questioned Ricky Rubio's. (laughs) Ricky Rubio's want to, to get back on that floor. And in this game right here, Ricky Rubio, clutch three, clutch free throws, clutch steals. Man, I mean, he changed the game. We we won the game. Five-point turnaround from Ricky Rubio saved the day. Unbelievably awesome feeling for myself and for all of us here in Timberwolves land. I mean, it's just... uh, Wonderful finish there, and a guy who definitely would be a lone wolf candidate for helping us beat one of the better teams in all of basketball. The number two record in the in the Western Conference. I mean, he, you must be good if you got the number two record in the West. Thirty-seven and thirteen. Just an awesome, awesome night for the Timberwolves to get their tenth win of the year, and for Rubio to come in and literally make a statement like, "Hey, you know what? We're not going to be a losing team. We're going to be a winning team." If I have anything to say about it, we're going to be winners. So now we head into Detroit. And no Rubio, unfortunately. <laughs> but no Rubio, no problem. Because for because the Wolves always seem to play well against Detroit. And this was a, well, what I used to call an iPod game. Now you could call it an Android phone game or an iPad game. <laughs> because lucky enough I have League Pass and I can use it on mobile multiple mobile devices now. With the different setup that they have now. Um... Because it wasn't on local television, so I was watching it on the mobile device. And the Wolves pretty much led the whole way in this one. Just a satisfying little victory for the Wolves in general. We, we always seem to play well. And at the same time, every time we go to Detroit, <laughs> every time we go to Detroit, it's not televised locally. It's like, yeah, we're not going to televise that garbage. What's the point? Well, maybe they just didn't want to see Pekovic have one of his better games of the season. 29 points against that against that big man combination to see Pekovic play that well that's extremely impressive I mean Andre Dummond double double machine 17 points 14 rebounds Greg Monroe almost got a double double but 15 points 9 rebounds only 5 of 11 from the floor though very quiet Andre Drummond only 8 field goal attempts and made all of them Detroit what are you doing why why is Caldwell Pope shooting 15 shots why is Augustine shooting 16 shots even though 7 of 16 isn't as bad as 6 of 15, but it's, yeah, it's close enough. Too many three-point attempts, Detroit. Too many. 31 three-point attempts? That's really bad. Really poor strategy by the Detroit. The Detroit Pistons. Horrible strategy. I was just watching it thinking, how many threes you got to take when you got big men, that, when you got Drummond, who's perfect from the floor? What was Detroit thinking? 31 three-point attempts? Take a hint. I mean, they barely shot 30%, and they shot 31 three-pointers. Absolutely pathetic. But we'll take it. That's okay. Go ahead. Just keep shooting them, you morons. Two of 18, two of 18, two of eight from the floor from Caldwell Pope, two of five from DJ Augustine, who uh, is actually filling in really nicely. For the also out of control Brandon Jennings, <laughs> DJ D- 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 Augustine's pretty good. He's pretty aggressive. He uh, he's definitely got a lot of passion out there, and he he wills himself to good games. Uh, a twenty point eight assist game for him, but just I mean, see, I, I'm not as mad at him as I am at like Caldwell Pope. If I'm a Detroit fan, two of eight from the floor, and just in the in general, Jody Meeks one of four. Ah. Oh, for 3 for Karan Butler. I almost forgot he was alive. Karan Butler still lives? 
he made he made one basket the whole night, one of four from the floor in almost 16 minutes. Marcus calls him Racine. I call him old Racine. <laughs> Joel Anthony from Miami Heat lore. When they won the championship, he was the fill-in at center, basically. I mean, that's basically what he was. Because somebody had to start at center for that team when they got their, that there. Well, they had their first season in 2011. They got to the finals and lost. And then, of course, their championship year in 2012. And then before you know it, the first Joel was on his way to uh, Detroit. And, well, there he is still to this day. One minute, 18 seconds. And uh, he had a turnover and a personal foul. Good stuff. Good stuff. Overall, though, just uh, Mo Williams. Mo Williams. I mean, he's 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 got some. <laughs> he 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 really is a crafty veteran, isn't he? I mean, drawing fouls. He was able to draw a foul beyond the arc on DJ Augustine, much to his chagrin. And then, of course, Mo Williams made his free throws. Got it like that. He only wound up with 11 points, though. 2 of 7 from the floor. Fairly sloppy. Uh, the Wolves did manage to shoot 51% from the floor, though. And that's because of guys like Pekovich and Thaddeus Young, who played very, very, very well in this game. Gorgi Zhang, wow. Uh, only 15 minutes in this one. And even though Pekovich only played 32, so uh, it just kind of is what it is, I suppose. I mean, I guess that is. I guess that does add up to 48 minutes right there. <laughs> it does. It's just Pekovic. It's funny, he only got three rebounds in the game, but 29 points, so we'll take it. And he made 11 or 12 free throws. A lot of calls going his way, and he deserved it. Pekovic, offensively, by far his best game of the season. He even got a couple steals. Kevin Martin, eh, again, shooting way the hell too much. Kind of helped Detroit stay in the game, missing all six of his three-point shots. That wasn't good. But Mo Williams made two of three. Thaddeus made both three-point shots he took. And only seven attempts from the floor, he managed to get 16 points. So, very efficient for him. And, of course, Andrew Wiggins, really good, especially early, with a nice kind of spin, drive to the lane, off the backboard. Awesome stuff. Wound up with 18 points, 6 of 12 from the floor. Awesome feed to Zach Levine. And that's not the first time this week he did that. He did that earlier against the um, Miami Heat. Andrew Wiggins, and he also fed uh, Anthony Bennett, I believe, in in the Miami game for a reverse dunk. Really liking what I'm seeing from Andrew Wiggins. He's starting to get some assists. Five assists in this one. 18, 8, and 5, as they say, <laughs> for from Andrew Wiggins. Just a solid, awesome, awesome type of night. And the announcers for the Detroit Pistons were gushing about the Timberwolves and were gushing about Andrew Wiggins and Zach Levine and guys like that. They even talked well about Anthony Bennett. Unfortunately, he only got two points in this game, did Anthony. And I'm going to continue to say... Give Anthony Bennett the ball near the basket because he is a force when he's near the basket. He can power that ball in there. He can drive on people when he when he wanted when he wants to drive to the basket, and that was the two points he got. A nice drive to the hoop on his own and a dunk. But then played continued to play another sixteen minutes and just only and didn't didn't attempt another shot other than well, he he missed one mid range shot and that's it. The rest of the way confused. Um a little bit. Giving Anthony Bennett the ball like near the basket, though, he's going to finish. And uh, that's what I like about him. He's a finisher. Just as a finisher alone, he could average like 10 to 12 points a game, much less maybe adding more of a post-up game, which I think he can, and driving to the basket, which I know he can because he, he did it tonight very efficient, effectively on that the one time he attempted it. I mean, he attempted it once, and it worked. So attempt it a couple more times a game. That would be nice. Go ahead and call me silly for that, but seriously, attempted more than once a game, maybe. Maybe he actually might become a nice player in this league. No reason he shouldn't. Poor strategy by the by Detroit. Not sure, again, what they were thinking, not feeding Andre Drummond some more than they did. I have no idea. Just too much, too many three-point shots, even though the Wolves' perimeter defense sucks. If the shot ain't falling and something else is working, take advantage of it, because Pekovic is not a good defender. And Drummond could have eaten him alive. It would have been a pretty interesting battle, I think, between those two if Detroit was just a little bit smarter than they were. But hey, again, like the Seattle Seahawks, <laughs> uh, we'll you know we'll take it. Like if, if we're the Patriots, so to speak, we'll take it. We'll take the dumb strategy. We'll take advantage of it and win the game. So why not? <laughs> why not? I mean, ultimately, again, just a, a solid, solid game for the Wolves on the road. They managed to get 26 assists, 15 turnovers. Kind of turnovers, I mean, pretty sloppy at times. 
but I've seen worse. And Zach Levine, a really efficient game. Made five or six points, <laughs> three assists in the game as well. I like what Zach Levine can bring. I mean, when, when he's making his shots and when he's receiving feeds from like the Anthony, from the Anthony, <laughs> the Andrew Wiggins and the Ricky Rubios of the world, he's going to continue to blossom in his league. And of course, again, the fact that he can add rebounding, steals, and assists, he's going to be such a valuable player. And I'm looking forward to continued success from Zach Levine because it's going to happen. It's going to happen without a doubt. Three wins in a row for the Wolves. Can we keep it going? Hmm. We're just going to have to wait and see on that. It's going to be fun to keep up with that. See how the Wolves do this upcoming week. Uh, but then again, when you look at who we're about to play, uh, I'll get to that when the time comes. It's uh, the likelihood of that. Not so great. I, I'm i sorry to say. It just kind of is what it is. So let's just check up quickly on what Mr. Tanae Brown had to say on the Facebook page just because it's related to what I'm about to get to, and that's the whole lone wolf and all that, the lone wolf and uh, Johnny Flynn conversation. I'd like to get this thing. It's just because I had to jump around. Here we go. <laughs> Tanae Brown out of New Zealand saying, you've got a tough job picking the lone wolf this week, Joey. Do you go with Wiggins and his consistency? Pekovic with his big, with his big game today. Rubio just willing the win over the Grizzlies, or even Kmart with his scoring. Uh, off too many shots, though, and I agree with that. Thaddeus Young has had a really good week, too. <laughs> I'd probably go with Wiggins myself. He's really been doing a lot for the Wolves, not just only the stat sheet stuff. He just makes smart basketball, basketball plays all the time. A lot of the time, he says. Looking forward to the show, mate. And luckily, I'm recording it the same, pretty much the same hour or so that you posted this. So, thank you, Tanae, and yeah, I'm glad I could please you, and I, and you're pleasing me as well with this post. Really like it. Always like his con- uh, inclusion on this show. Uh, so let's get to the lone wolf, ultimately. I'm going to give it to Rubio for the week because of the way he willed the victory over the Memphis Grizzlies. And the fact that, the, look at the team, look at the team's play in the four games that Ricky Rubio has been back on the roster. Is there, and of course tonight he wasn't on the team, but look at the confidence of this team now. Look at the confidence of the Minnesota Timberwolves because of what Ricky Rubio was able to bring. And they know he's going to be back. In fact, Rubio was dressed up in his uniform anyway, even though he wasn't activated. <laughs> he, he, I'm sure he had his jersey underneath his, you know, his regular, you know, the shirt and the warm up and all that stuff because he was wearing the, the warm up and everything. They just decided, let's sit him out because of the ankle and everything. Let's let it heal, let it heal up a little bit. It it was mostly like a rest type of thing, precautionary type of thing. But yeah, think about it. Four games, and the Wolves, they lose one game by six points to one of the best teams in basketball, the Dallas Mavericks. They defeat one of the best teams in basketball, thanks to Ricky Rubio's literally willing them to the victory in that one. Just an unbelievable clutch performance by a guy who... (laughs) Looks like a franchise player. Heck, he's even doing what Garnett used to do, like everybody up on their feet, you know, and they're waving the, you know, getting uh, everybody to get up, basically. You know what I'm talking about. And, you know, his shooting form is different. His passing form is as good as ever. He gets steals at the most opportune times. He makes three-point shots when he needs to. And they look good. They're not just lucky looking like you know, crazy shots off the backboard or something like that, and they just happen to go in type of thing. Um, the whole, <laughs> the whole perception of this team right now is different. The whole aura of the Minnesota Timberwolves is completely different now that Ricky Rubio is back in the fold. And just listening to him talk the other night after the Wolves beat the Memphis Grizzlies, he sounds like the, he, I mean, he is the captain. <laughs> he is the captain of the team. And when you have your captain leading you to victory the way he did, and literally the showing that he has the ability to do that, which before you really did not get the vibe that he could just literally lead you to a win on his own like that. Before, you never would have seen that. There's something special about Ricky Rubio, man, and it's really exciting. So he absolutely deserves the Lone Wolf Award, and he is going to get it today. Honorable mention to Pekovic for, well, tonight's game in general. Really just an overpowering game. But he's kind of off and on, off and on, off and on. I mean, he he was good overall this week, but he's not like a franchise type of center. 
He's not. I mean, heck, I think Gorgie's better than him, and I think most of the week he was better. Tonight, Gorgie barely got to even play or barely got the ball. Kevin Martin's all over the place. Um, he had an awesome game against the Miami Heat, though. 30 points. He was, he was awesome in that game. But ultimately, Martin, yeah, I mean, he shoots too much. He did help us win that Miami Heat game, without a doubt. But so did Rubio. So did, so did Thaddeus Young. He was really good in that game. I'm going to continue to say Thaddeus Young was outstanding in that one. And just the overall aura of the Timberwolves, though, changing the minute Rubio is back in the picture. And remember how well the Wolves were playing when Rubio was, was healthy at the beginning of the season before the injury? We almost beat the Grizzlies in Memphis. I mean, think about it. They're the number two seed in the Western Conference, I will remind you. That's damn good. They're ahead of the Clippers. They're ahead of the Spurs. They're ahead of the Dallas Mavericks. They're ahead of the Rockets. They're ahead of the Portland Trailblazers. They're ahead of the, well, Thunder, yeah. They're ahead of a lot of really good teams. That's how good the Grizzlies are. And we beat them. We beat them. And Rubio wheeled us to victory in that one. And they just looked kind of stunned. Like, I can't believe this. Did the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. Like, they literally got beat. It wasn't because they sucked. It's because Rubio was awesome. Lone Wolf through Rubio. Long story longer. Okay, sorry. (laughs) Johnny Flynn Memorial. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Who, 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 Who can I give it to? Johnny Flynn Memorial. I'm going to give it to nobody. No, I I, I guess Budinger. He really just, he's, he's a non-factor now, it seems like. But it's not necessarily his fault. The minutes aren't so good. They're pretty sparing. Uh, it's like, I can't even give it to Bennett, even though you'd think he wasn't very effective out there. I can't give it to Bennett. I can't. And even Mo Williams, who was with him, and he got nine assists tonight, despite the fact he shot poorly. And sometimes his field goal attempts are really dumb. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to generally give it to Buttinger because he's just kind of out of the picture right now. And it's not really trying to kick him when he's down. But even when he did play, he did not play particularly well. And the rest of the guys right now, I mean, Daddy's Young's playing well enough. I can't give it to him. Zach Levine's so raw, I can't really give it to him. Gorgie's performance tonight, not impressive, but partially because Pekovic is playing so well. And I'm not going to give any loan. I'm not going to give any Johnny Flynn to Pekovich. That'd be kind of silly. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have to, by default, give it to Chase Bunninger or no Troy Daniels. I'm going to give it to Troy Daniels. The limit, the little amount of time he's in there now, you're pretty much like, oh no, Troy Daniels is in there. So I'm going to give it to him actually he, because he doesn't make anything anymore. He presents zero reason to want him in the game. Um, when he has the ball in his hand, you're praying to God he doesn't turn it over or he doesn't get stripped, and then you just know he's going to miss when he uh, when he actually takes a shot. So, no, I'm, I'm going to give it to Troy Daniels. I was, it, t- it took a little while for me to come to that conclusion, and that's kind of bad radio, so I do apologize for that. But Troy Daniels, I think, a very well-deserving uh, Johnny Flynn Memorial because he is Johnny Flynn. All right, long segment ended. We'll be back for a much shorter <laughs> preview segment right after this. Ah, winter and snow are back again. Nothing tastes better this time of year than Vanilla Bean Buffalo Sweat by Tall Grass Beer from Manhattan, Kansas. This Vanilla Bean edition of Buffalo Sweat literally warms your innards in this outstanding stout with that warming vanilla kick. Don't forget to try 8-Bit Pale Ale, the official beer of this podcast. When you see Pac-Man licking his chops, you found an amazing can and an even better beer. Check out the many other wonderful beers Tallgrass offers on their website at www.tallgrassbeer.com. Use their beer locator to see what's available in your area. You can follow Tallgrass on Twitter at TallgrassMN and like them on Facebook. Simply search for Tallgrass Minnesota. Tallgrass Beer, bringing people together over a beer since 2007. Too busy to sit in front of a computer? Simply download Timberwolves Explosion on iTunes for Apple devices. For Android, download the Double Twist app. And for Windows and Blackberry phones, simply find us in the store. And now, back to Paladino Joey and Marcus the Forecaster. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two. That's the preview segment. And like I've stated probably two or three times already, 
it's going to be abbreviated because there's only two games to preview because the All-Star break is coming up. And I'll talk about that extremely shortly as they wrap up this segment. Well, the Timberwolves, hey, we get to have two home games as we head into the All-Star break. And we'll come back to host the Phoenix Suns after that, too, on February the 20th. So what a nine-day hiatus, which will be kind of a bummer, but it'll give me a little teensy-weensy break, too, or it'll make the show easier next week, ultimately. Because <laughs> I'll only be reviewing two games at the time. I'll only be reviewing these two games. Yeah, it's a two-game homestand. Hey, we're going to keep the win-, win streak going, or maybe we'll wait. We'll get one out of the two. We'll win... She will win four out of five games. Yeah, or four out of six if you include the Dallas game. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, but we get to host the two best teams in all of basketball. Oh, goody. The Atlanta Hawks, the best team in basketball right now, officially because they beat the Warriors in the uh, NBA Finals preview earlier this week, <laughs> which wasn't televised anywhere. Congratulations, NBA, in giving us the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs instead. Yeah, that's 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 great. <laughs> It's good stuff. And I know the uh, the courtside, I believe, talked about that as well. Courtside podcast. Hank McCoy, Vince Germano. Gee, I'm shouting out to them again. That's weird. Boy, I don't do that very often, do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do shout out to you guys every episode, don't I? Because I love you. And I love your show. And I think everybody listening should know about the Courtside Podcast. And check it out on iTunes. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You, you don't want to hear the Sherlock Holmes and, and John Watson of basketball radio. Are you kidding me? Now, right now, see, I'm the Daryl Hall, and but John Oates is kind of getting, I don't know, he's kind of got the old ball and chain right now, and he's uh, not getting out of it, so it just is what it is. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, basically, he's just unavailable right now. I'll just leave it as, <laughs> he's just not available right now, but he'll be back. So, John Oates will be back. Remember, you know, sometimes they got split up and then they came back together again. But uh, there's there's no battle between us. He's just not available. So, I'm the Daryl Hall. I'm the Daryl Hall. Yes. Well, even though, yeah, it's like blue-eyed soul, you could say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, back to the point here. Because I'm already running a segment that's supposed to not be very long. Way too long. Minnesota Timberwolves host the Atlanta Hawks Monday, February the 9th. And they're going to lose the game. Do you, you think the Wolves are going to beat the Hawks? Now, if Rubio goes out there and plays really good and gets another 9-10 assist game, hits some clutch shots, Andrew Wiggins goes off for 25, 20 points, whatever it is, maybe somebody on a, maybe somebody uh, like Gorgie Zhang or even Anthony Bennett steps up, has a massive game, like a 20-20 type of game or whatever it is. Maybe Bennett has like a 15 and, and 12 type of game or, or Gorgie has like 18 rebounds and 21 points, 3 blocks and we win. That'd be fantastic, and man, would I be excited! <laughs> would I be excited to review that game on next week's show, circa Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever it is, and late next week? Just a two-game review. That'll be a short. That'll be a short but fun show, especially if we actually win those games, win one of these two games. But uh, I personally do not think we will win the game. Uh, the last time the Timberwolves played the Atlanta Hawks was not that long ago. It really wasn't, and. Man, what a complete team, and I'm going to keep continue to say they remind me of the Detroit Pistons of 2004 with just an overall deep lineup. You got, you know, you got a you got a Ben Wallace, but a, maybe a better version of him, who's a really good defender in Al Horford. You got Paul Millsap, who's like the Rasheed Wallace. You got Jeff Teague, who's the Chauncey Billups, Kyle Korver, Carter, uh, Carter Carroll. I mean, it's just a really strong team. Uh, Atlanta Hawks won 112 to 100 last time around in Atlanta. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day. No, no, it wasn't. I'm getting it mixed up with a different one. Uh, it was a week after that. I do apologize for that. The Wolves played Charlotte that day. But a, a, about a week later. Um, 112 to 100. Felt like it was going to be a lot worse than that. But the Wolves kind of hung hung on. It's going to be something like that again, I think. Well, may, maybe not. I, I think the Wolves will play it a bit closer. It's at home. We have Rubio this time. I think Atlanta scores um, 100... And seven, and I think the Wolves get 102. It's going to be close, but the Hawks will pull it out late. That's my humble opinion. A very entertaining game. Somebody like a Rubio. Rubio's probably going to be a factor, obviously, in keeping the Wolves in it. But I think one of the big men is going to have a big game. Uh, either Pekovic or Gorgi. And I'm leaning Gorgi. I am leaning Gorgi in that one. In my humble opinion, but not a Wolves victory. Wednesday, February the 11th. February the 11th. The Golden State Warriors come to Minneapolis, Target Center, and beat the Timberwolves because they always beat the Timberwolves. Um, they always beat the Timberwolves. 
Yeah, the last time they came here, they won 110-97 to back on Saturday, December the 27th. No Rubio in the lineup. Uh, Monday, pardon me for slapping my lips over and over again. That's annoying. I apologize. i got to break that habit. Monday, December the 8th, 102-86. to Minnesota loses to the Golden State Warriors, 102-86. to Just a terrible matchup for the Wolves. We never play these guys well. They're, uh... Obviously, you got the Splash Brothers. They, the other night, I mean, my goodness, Steph Curry couldn't miss a frickin' shot the whole night. It's just unbelievable. And the Wolves' perimeter defense has really never been good, and Detroit tried to exploit that tonight, and they sucked hardcore at it. I mean, they just sucked. But the Warriors will be making their threes, because they make threes. I mean, Steph Curry's making like 40%. Clay Thompson makes like 40-some percent for his career. Uh, Harrison Barnes is, you know, he's a valuable piece. Dreaming Green just kicks our freaking ass every time we play them. There's just nothing we can do about it. And that Spites guy, he's better than Bogut. And I do apologize to all the Aussies listening. I love all you guys. <laughs> but, yeah, Spites has been more valuable than Bogut for the most part. For the most part. I'm not trying to piss off anybody in Australia for that one. And, uh, yeah, um, Andre Goodala's always been a pain in the ass for the Wolves. You know what? There isn't a single member of the Golden State Warriors that isn't a pain in the ass for the Wolves in the history. Even David Lee's been a thorn in our side forever. Harrison Barnes had the dunk of the year pretty much on Pekovic about two years ago. That pissed me off. Ugh. When he was a rookie. Just like, ah, oh, come on. It was like the dunk of the freaking season. And I mean the entire league. Not against the Wolves. Clay Thompson makes like a million shots. Whatever. Wolves are going to lose. It's going to be one... Hundred thousand? No, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. This is gonna be a high-scoring game. I'm gonna go with 112 to 101. 112, 101. Warriors outlast the Wolves. Stephen Curry or Thompson. One of the two gets 30, and the other gets like 25. Uh, I don't like the Warriors that much. I don't. I mean, but <laughs> I want to like the Warriors, but I don't. <laughs> you know, I mean. It, he who lives by the three-point shot dies by the three-point shot, and it's going to cost him in the playoffs like it did last year and the year before. It, it's going to cost him. Watch. Somebody like Dallas, San Antonio, or Memphis is going to knock them out in the in the second round, I think, in my opinion. I don't think... Or maybe the conference finals, actually. They, they might go all the way to the conference finals, but one of those teams is going to knock them out when, when the time comes. I don't think the Warriors make the NBA finals. <gasps> oh, my God! Yep, I said it. Oh, I said it. Yep, I said it. Because I can say it, damn it. This is my show. It's my show. What do you want to do about it? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But anyhow, yeah. <laughs> After that, it's All-Star Weekend. Wow, isn't that exciting? You know what? The last time the All-Star Weekend was fresh was when they were playing this song during the Slam Dunk Competition. You hear that? You hear that? Yeah. 91, baby. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sean Kemp. John Kemp and D. Brown, man. You hear that? <laughs> yep. That was that was when they got to the, the final round. John Kemp and D. Brown. Pump, old pump it up. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss those days so freaking much. And go ahead and call me an old timer or somebody stuck in the past or somebody who's not progressive. And ah, screw that word. I, I hate that word because it's overused. We're happy for you with your progressive this, progressive that. But... <laughs> <laughs> if I like something from the good old days, doesn't matter if if that makes it. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> doesn't make me that doesn't make me a bad guy at all. Um, the wolves uh, or the wolves? What am I talking about? Well, we'll have Zach Levine in the slam dunk contest. That's what I'm trying to get to. Hopefully, he makes it interesting and, and gets it done. Vince Germano seems to think so. I think he'll. I think there's a very good chance he can win. But you know what? You know, you never know. Sometimes the guy's supposed to win and he blows like an alley-oop that he's supposed to have. It slips out of his hand, and that's it. Zero, 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 zero. See you next year, buddy. That's basically what happened to Deshaun Stevenson, who thought he was going to get it walking away. He didn't get jack squat. He was out in the first round. So, <laughs> No, actually, he got further, but he still lost. Either way, I mean, you lose, you lose. So, yeah. Um, I miss the old slam dunk competition. I miss the old All-Star game. And that's pretty much how I'm going to wrap up this segment. I uh, don't even have a prediction because I, ah, I'll watch it. I'll watch what I can of it. I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but if I'm not available to watch it, I'm not going to be available to watch it. Uh-oh. So with that, <laughs> I'll take a quick break and let's get to the fan interaction. Let's not, let's 
Let's not let this drag on much longer. Do you shop on Amazon? Did you know that you can support this podcast just by doing your normal shopping on Amazon? It's real easy to do. Just go to thesportstuff.com and click on one of the many Amazon pictures. Do your normal shopping, and Amazon sees that we referred you, and they give us a percentage. We'd like to thank you in advance for supporting thesportstuff.com, and please use our Amazon link. Now enjoy the rest of the show. We are going Contact us and support Timberwolves Explosion by liking us on Facebook and following at Wolves Explosion on Twitter. Don't forget to call into our phone lines at 209-736-7877. That's 209-736-7877. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number three, fan interaction segment. Now it's time to hear from you guys out there. In Minnesota, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and other places out there. Thank you so very much for your pars- participation. <laughs> participation. <laughs> participation. Participation. Thank you very much indeed for being a part of things. Really appreciate you all so very much. A couple comments. Uh, actually, just one comment from Tanae Brown when I posted that there was Explosion episode 136 is out. He said, great show as always, Joey. I always look forward to hearing what you have to say about the team, mate. And I thank you so very much, Tanae. And, and Tanae's the one from New Zealand on here. I tell him, basically, thank you so much. I treasure your loyalty and your friendship. Thank you so very much again, Tanae. And we'll be hearing from him lots more here in the very near future here on the Facebook page for Timber Wolves Explosion. Man, man, man. Oh, there is a lot of posting on here, isn't there? Brett Walters, yeah, that, we left off with Brett Walters last time, and we'll be hearing from him again. Vince Germano was saying, you see the lob? Man, it's good to have Rubio back. Wiggins is going to love playing with Rubio. How could he not? And yeah, I mean, it was right away in the Dallas game. He saw Wiggins uh, receiving a lob from Rubio in the dunk. It's going to be a great relationship between these two guys, i got to think. Uh, very, very, very exciting. Without a doubt. This is going to be a perfect, it, it's a perfect relationship. It's something me and Marcus always dreamed of when you had Ricky Rubio. It wasn't going to be Al Jefferson and Rubio, and even really Kevin Love and Rubio. Not the best combination. Now you got Wiggins, man, and you got Levine, and you got Bennett, who I think could be a very good recipient of lobs. He can finish when he's near the basket, man. I mean, Bennett is a powerful guy, and he makes his <laughs> he makes his dunks regardless if there's defenders or not, and the in the area, in, in, in the you know, in the near, in the perimeter, and all that good stuff. Hank McCoy saying, "Yay, Rubio is back! Now let's trade him." Oh, come on, Sherlock! What are you doing here, buddy? He says, "What if the Timberwolves offseason made everyone on the roster available except for Wiggins, except Wiggins for Russell Westbrook? Mm, would you pull the trigger?" Thoughts. No, I would not pull the trigger because Russell Westbrook is, well, he's a lot of what I don't like about Kevin Martin and other guys out there, the uh, <laughs> the Deion Waiters of the league. And no, Russell Westbrook's better than Deion Waiters, but now they're teammates. That's got to be very interesting. Can't imagine that's a good chemistry filler, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Um, no, I, I just, I don't know. He's too much of a ball hog. You get these 7 of 21, 7 of 22, 8 of 23 type performances from Russell Westbrook. And I imagine that he will shoot you right out of a series. Vince Germano saying, no, no, no. Tanae Brown saying the Thunder would be making a bad move giving me a Westbrook like that. TJ Hollis saying, no. Russell, Russell Wilson, don't want that. Ha! And I simply said, I'm not a fan. The guy will shoot you out of a playoff series. And this is where things get interesting. Hank McCoy says, at least you'd make the playoffs. Zing! And Dan May saying, double zing. Ouch. And of course, that's copyright courtside, the whole zing deal. Uh, Hank McCoy simply saying LOL. And he says, I guess the real question is, would, would Minnesota be willing to trade Ricky Rubio if it's an upgrade? Before you answer that, you have to ask yourself, number one, what have we gotten out of Rubio so far in a Timberwolves jersey? And two, how long do you wait for a potential to develop? Well, right now, when you're seeing, <laughs> right now, when you're seeing what Ricky Rubio is, what difference he is making to this team right now, 
I'm le- I mean, I want to see long term what he can do because yes, when he has gotten hurt, there've been massive injuries where he's been out for a long period of time, like the ACL and the ankle, but they were four years apart though. It's not like Rubio's constantly, constantly hurt. He's finally starting to make some shots now. I want to see what Rubio can do. I'm in no rush to trade Ricky Rubio right now, and he's a perfect match for these athletic guys. Russell Westbrook is just going to take the ball out of Wiggins' hands. He's going to take the ball out of Levine's hands. He's going to take the ball out of Anthony Bennett's hands. He's going to take the ball out of the next rookie's hands if it's Okafer or God knows what. Um, He's going to take the ball out of their hands. Russell Westbrook takes the ball out of Kevin Durant's hands. In fact, he's shot in 10 more... I mean, quite often times you see him attempt 10 more shots than Kevin Durant, where Durant will be like 10 of 15 and Russell Westbrook will be 8 of 25. So that's why I don't like Russell Westbrook. I don't like him, man. He's talented, but he's a he's a ball hog. He's a ball hog. I mean, dare I almost called him a cancer. That might be a little too far, but I don't know. He's, he, he's a ball hog, man. He is. Dan May saying, as if Westbrook would go to mini, please. Sorry, Joey Wygen. That's the other thing. Um, if he goes anywhere, it's probably like the Lakers or something. <laughs> probably, if he leaves. Yeah, I mean, but then again, if it's a trade, it's a trade. I mean, whatever. Maybe he's got a no-trade clause. I haven't really been studying into that. But, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't happen anyway. Let's just say it wouldn't happen anyway. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'd am i like to see more and more out of Rubio with these guys. And, of course, the next rookie and all that good stuff. Brett Walters with something pretty cool here. He says it's tough to say. It's tough to say right now, since he's been out for a while. But should we look at Shabazz as the small forward of the future? I tend to be in favor of locking him in to that starting role and seeing how he develops as a three in this league. He is a unique player that creates some interesting matchup situations, and I like the idea of keeping Andrew at the two while Martin comes off the bench. Thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, um, Martin coming off the bench, that's, that's well, for one right there, I really like that. Uh, Andrew played really good at the two. In fact, he had a he had some huge games, like 30-point game, 28-point game. He played at the two quite a bit. I mean, I really like the lineup when you had <laughs> Gor- Gorgi at the, at the four and uh, Thaddeus at the, at, at the three. I even like that because Shabazz was out. But imagine Gorgi at the four. Man, you know, the, this is where it gets tough. I mean, uh, you know, I, I personally think the perfect lineup would be, <laughs> yeah, and not everybody's going to like it, but a lot of people will. You know, you got Rubio at the point. Okay, Wiggins at the two. He can also be the three as well, depending on maybe you have him switching around during the course of the game. I think Wiggins ultimately is better as a three because he's more multifaceted there. But at the same time, Shabazz Muhammad is a better three than he is a two as well. And Wiggins is more than capable of being a really good two. And ultimately, two, three, this kind of swing man, you, you kind of do, I mean, you, you do a lot of similar things as well. It's just you're going to get a little bit larger guy. And, of course, a guy like uh, Shabazz who's bigger than Andrew Wiggins. And he's a good post-up threat with a, you know, he, he really posts people up with his bigger body, does uh, Shabazz. So, yeah, you the fact you put him at three. And so maybe you have... If you want to, uh, depending on the situation, I mean, my personal favorite would be, my personal favorite would be Pakovic at center, Gorgi at power forward, uh, Shabazz at small, Wiggins at two, and of course Rubio at one. But then if you have to have uh, Thaddeus in the lineup, then you put Gorgi at center and Thad at, at four, and then have Peck come off the bench for some energy and some scoring to go with, like the Mo Williams and such. That's that's not bad either. I mean, no. You know, we're like, yeah, like with Levine and such. That's a talented group of guys, too. So you have kind of like multiple units out there that can score some points. Maybe uh, you have Kevin Martin to go with them, too. I mean, think about that. Kevin Martin at the two, Williams at one. Shoot, that's a pretty good, <laughs> that's a pretty high-scoring group of guys there. So there you go. And there you go. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like what you had to say there, Brett, and that's definitely a gold star candidate. Good stuff, without a doubt. Surprising, uh, see, I responded to him. Hopefully he uh, has been listening to the show. He didn't respond back to anything. I don't know. But if he's posting back-to-back weeks, that's a good sign. Hopefully he's uh, hopefully he is a listener. And if you are listening regularly, Brett, uh, comment on the page. Let me know in, in your next comment. Keep posting, Brett. Keep posting. I really like what you had to say there. Hank McCoy saying, random question for the show. Being how you live in Minnesota, have you ever seen a real-life Timberwolf? 
What the hell is the difference between a normal wolf and a timber wolf? <laughs> this has been bugging me for years. I could Google it, but I'm lazy. Well, I'm lazy too, Hank, so so too bad. No, I mean, yeah, I've seen a timber wolf at the zoo, but never in person. I've never been, like, around a wolf in person. I've seen a fox in the wild, in fact, very recently. <laughs> I've seen a fox in the wild. Like, our neighborhood has uh, turkeys, wild turkeys in it. Can you believe that? And I do not live in the country, folks. I live awfully close to Minneapolis, so think about it. Turkeys. There's like 21 of them I counted in, in a tree. In, in a tree in like the neighborhood where they sleep at night. There's a big giant black blobs in the tree in the night. It looks kind of creepy in a big giant oak tree in like some backyard that's kind of leading into the woods. It's a... Uh, because there are wooded areas just because um, around here. So that must be why. I mean, you get deer, you get everything. Um, I've even heard a... I've heard a coyote going that in the distance, so... Yeah, there have been, uh, there's wildlife around here, but I've never seen a timber wolf out in the wild. The difference, um, there really isn't a difference. It's just a different type of wolf, I guess. I don't know. I mean, there really isn't really much I have to offer in that one. Um, it basically is a wolf. <laughs> Tanae Brown was saying, it's great that our hardest worker is also the leader of the team. A great win for the wolves. It's games like these where you can see how bright the future could be for the wolves. He, and uh, he, uh, this is Tanae Brown posting a tweet from John Krasinski. That's A.P. Krasinski, guy I follow, and he's a good guy. He's tweeted back to me before. He says, and what is Rubio doing right now? After tweaking the ankle and knee and going toe-to-toe with Riz, he's working out with his personal trainer. Yeah, that's awesome. Tanae continuing saying, also, it looks like Flip might be arresting Rubio and Crack on back-to-backs. I think it's a smart move, but I'd rather see them play. Ha-ha, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you have to rest them, okay. It probably won't be like that forever. Maybe with Pekovic sometimes. I, I don't blame him because he's so damn injury prone. And Rubio is just to make sure that ankle's strong. It's, but And yeah, they rested him tonight and it wasn't even a back-to-back. So, uh, yeah, he's going to miss some games. He's going to have to Popovich a couple games, unfortunately, as we like to call it. Hank McCoy saying, um, I don't even want to talk about it because we beat his Grizzlies. So, Hank McCoy is a Grizzlies fan, folks. He says, it must have been too cold and many. Ice on the floor. Yep, ice. Ice. <laughs> Did you see Conley slip late in the fourth? Unfair advantage. Mother Nature won the game for the Timberwolves. LOL. Entertaining game. Go Grizz. It was a very entertaining game. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> I love it. And I'm sorry you lost. But, yeah, but you pretty good chance you're going to the Western Coverage Finals this year. Maybe even the final. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be something. Indeed. I'd like to Google it, though, now. Uh, I'm just doing goofy. <laughs> uh, it's just like... Timber wolf and a wolf. Let's see, what is the difference? There probably really isn't. Uh, species of gray wolves in North America included the Arctic wolf, Canis, Canis lupus, okay. That's just, uh, timber wolf, Canis lupus. Uh, it's just too many Canis, this Canis, that which is debated by some as extinct species. Ah, that doesn't help. <laughs> they just look different, I guess. They're just different types of gray, so different shades of gray, I suppose. Okay, I did not say that. Mm. There really isn't much... Uh... I suppose the timber wolf would be like a gray one. Okay, so there you go, because there's different other colors. So, Okay, Hank McCoy saying, Good to see Rudy Fernandez playing well. I always thought the wolves would have made... A play for him and team him up with his Spanish teammate Ricky Rubio. Yeah, I remember hearing about that a lot too in the past. He says, never really thought he got a chance in Portland and Denver. Could the Wolves bring him back to the league? Thoughts? They could. Um, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not really sure where to go with it. And uh, yeah, keep posting it. I mean, I have no problem with that. I wouldn't like complain too much. He's Probably less of a ball hog than Berea. <laughs> or somebody like that to come in to be a backup. Mo Williams is probably not going to be back. Uh, he's only signed a one-year deal, and i got to think a uh, veteran team looking to make a push into the playoffs is going to get him. Yeah, a la Clippers, a uh, uh, Grizzlies maybe. Maybe the Grizzlies would like Mo Williams as a backup point guard. Or, uh, of course, they already have that other guy as their backup. He's pretty good, too. Um Cavaliers, I already mentioned, I think. Maybe even the Hawks. Maybe the ah, maybe the Blazers again. Who knows? Tanae Brown continuing saying, you've got a tough job picking the Lone Wolves this week. I already read that one. 
And Vince Germano wrapping up the face to page saying Peck playing well, showcase the skills, and up that trade value. I'm not saying it is a knock on Peck. Because <laughs> I do love the guy. I just believe Deng is the guy that will be slash should have should have been starting when you guys are having playoff runs. Um, should should be starting when you guys have playoff runs. Yeah, uh, I agree that Gorgie Zhang is the overall better center long term. And I'd like to trade Peck if you can get a nice package in return. Whatever it is. a shoot, uh, You know, it's like, do I even want to say shooting guard anymore? Because look at Wiggins. It's kind of tough. I mean, it's more of like, let's see what's out there type of thing. Because somebody out there, I think, would love Peck and love to offer at least something for him. <laughs> I'm not even sure where to go with it right now because... You know, the, the whole logjam situation at small forward and shooting guard that could be starting to form because of the, uh, well, you know, the whole situation with Muhammad and Wiggins right now. And if you took Okavari of a logjam at center, and I mean a huge logjam there, power forward is kind of all over the place. Perhaps a power forward. Perhaps trade him for a power forward of some kind. That, that might be the best option because Thaddeus Young is not, the, not somebody you want to keep forever. I mean, he'll probably be back next year because he'll keep his option, but who knows, maybe he will get traded. Hasn't happened yet, but it will come up at some point. The trade rumors have been quiet, but sometimes when things are quiet, the wheels are turning the most. Let's check Twitter really quick and wrap up this show, as I've been dragging it a little bit longer than I probably would have liked at this point, and I do apologize for that. I was so good about it before, too. Oh, and I didn't even have it up correctly. And we'll (laughs) open up the Twitter page. To Kamal Hilton saying, I check out uh, to check out the latest Timberwolves explosion. Andrew Wiggins special. Thank you again so much, Kamal Hilton, for posting these. I really appreciate it for posting and retweeting and such. Um, blah, blah, blah. Lots of favorites and stuff. Tene Brown was saying, trying to get his trade value up, but not doing a very good job of it. Ha ha. And that being, yep, yeah, I was saying Kevin Martin is such a bleeping ball hog because he, he, he really was at times during the course of the week against Dallas especially. I was getting pissed off at that game. Average Jer saying J-E-R. Average Jer saying least of the team's worries in this game and that was when I was talking about that Wiggins was going to lose his uh, double digit thing and the Wolves came back to win that one against Miami luckily. At the time we were definitely losing that game. We were down by 10 like I was saying earlier. Vince Germano at Vinrock44 saying agreed mate. He's hopefully he's traded out soon. And I was talking about, again, Martin is too much of a ball hog for this team. When he was hurt, I didn't miss him at all. No, I didn't. And then Vince Germano saying, Rubio! Because we beat the, uh, yeah. We beat the, <laughs> well, no, we were beating the Heat at the time. It was really nice, some nice passing there. And he's saying, as much as I love Pack, Vince saying, as much as I love Pack, Flip has got to see Gorgie is the future, even if you get back expiring contracts or picks. It'll be interesting to see where things go there. It really will. Um, Tanae Brown saying it's been a fun game so far, huh? And that was the uh, that was the Memphis game. That was unbelievable. And Wiggins to Bennett for the thunderous jam. Hashtag T Wolves in future. It was it was fun. It was a really nice kind of a side. He saved the ball. Wiggins is saving the ball, and he f- flung it over to Anthony Bennett for a reverse jam. That was really nice stuff. Tanae again saying uh, our offense just disappears. It's embarrassing. That was against Memphis because our defense is incredibly good. So I'm just excited for the offseason so we can get a new coach. Hopefully we get that number one pick. It would help me get over all the losses. <laughs> uh, three number one draft picks in three years wouldn't be bad place to be when rebuilding. Yeah, that's very true. Rubio won that game for the team. Yep, I know he did. It was a uh, awesome, awesome night and w- without a doubt. And, was, and James was saying, uh, James, at Jimmy by Tendorp was saying, can make a three and clutch free throws. And yes, he did, being Rubio. Can't have too many more of those Ws for Okafer. Yep, he's a hashtag Okafer. Totally get you there. Cool Way was saying, what's wrong with Ricky? That was tonight. And of course, that was because they're arresting him. And today was Brown was saying, that's the Anthony Bennett we want to see because he made that drive to the basket. And we wrap it up with today saying, Peck has been a beast in this game. I was worried we were going to lose the game until they went inside more to him. And yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Pekovic dominated down low, and Detroit couldn't do much about it, and they weren't giving their guys the ball down low, like I rendered it about earlier. So, with that, let's wrap the show up. I want to thank you guys so very much for listening. Thank you so much for your 
for your retweets and shout outs. Thank you so much for the shout out on uh, Courtside. That was awesome. And they shout out to me regularly, but the last one was really, really nice and really uplifting, saying how much he's been loving the show. And I've really been loving the Courtside of late as well. And I always have loved that show. Love it. I want to thank all of you that have posted reviews on iTunes. It's, it's been a while, though, since one has popped up on there, and I'd like some more. So, guys, please do write a review on iTunes for Timberwolves Explosion. Tell us what you'd like about the show. Maybe even mention what you'd like improved. Give us a nice rating. If you like the show, give me a nice four- or five-star rating, and it would be greatly appreciated without a doubt. Heck, maybe if it's only three stars, it's only three stars, but any review is appreciated. <laughs> I really thank you all so much. Don't think the Wolves are going to win either game, but if they do, boy, boy, that would be fun. And boy, boy, if they turn the corner, at least for the time being. <laughs> and boy, that means Rubio really is the MVP of this team, isn't he? If we start beating the Hawks and Warriors. But that Memphis game was a nice step in the right direction, as far as I'm concerned. And I will leave you with that note. And we'll be back after the All-Star game and to talk some, uh, talk some, talk some Warriors and Hawks and preview the next week. On the next episode of Timberwolves Explosion, until then, everybody do take care.